Our next destination was to Steep Point, the most western point of mainland Australia. From there we explored the inner bays of Shark Bay. So when we left the Abrolhos we picked, and picked the, uh, the weather to do it and we had it from a stern which meant that we can use our favourite sail, our Spinnaker from UK Sailmakers in Greenland, it's, it's a free float. It was really relaxed sailing. Um, it was really relaxed sailing until Spinnaker Halyard broke, we dropped it into the water. Um, but it didn't really stop us. You know, we were able to pick it up and stow it away and then we just goose wing and just continued on at a really pleasant time. Unbelievable. Trout or blue bone? Blue bone. Ah. Too bad we didn't get that mahi mahi. That yeah. would have been nice. Panko. Live to fight another day. Oh, so good. There yet. What do you see? I see our entrance. We just want to see if there's any breakers on the actual bar. A little bit of an impromptu surf into our anchorage might not be that great. So we're travelling along nicely along the Zoitdorf cliffs there and then we turn to starboard to go around Steep Point. Yeah, so the wind was following, as it tends to do, the wind was following the coastline along the Zoitdorf cliffs but as it got to Steep Point um, it has what's called the cliff effect. So the 15 knots were funnelled and concentrated into a 30 knot near gale even though the weather was nice and uh, it was just the interaction with the cliffs and we didn't shorten the main we furled the headsail and uh, i was just quick on the main sheet just to let it go when we got too much but we were going pretty fast and it was a lot of fun actually it's really good you can see we put the drop board in um that was because we were crossing a sandbar as well and i was just if we took a big wave in behind us i didn't want it rushing down through the cockpit After roaring around Steep Point, uh, we went to the aptly named Shelter Bay where it was, it was pretty, pretty good conditions. We dropped the anchor and then Pascal was away. A feed of oysters. Delicious. Already like knocked the shells off them with a hammer and a chisel and they're ready for us to eat on the boat. I'm just gonna pop them in the fridge. When we were sailing here to Shark Bay from the Abrolhos through the night 
what I think has happened is a block at the top of the mast has let go. Um, and then the, the halyard, the, the rope holding the top of the spinnaker, it's dropped down and it allowed this to rub on something up there. It's parted ways. So now we've got uh, the halyard that's normally up inside the, the mast itself here. And this is the bit leading to the top of the spinnaker. So that's let go. So the top of the spinnaker fell forward into the sea. Um, so we had to slow the boat, we had to recover that back on deck. Uh, and we continued, we actually put the sails goose wing and we, we managed to make good time all the same. But what that's uh, left us with is a mast with no spinnaker halyard in it. In fact, it's all been pulled down through. So we actually need to get up there and devise a way of putting that back up there. Pascal and I got our heads together and what we figured out was that we just needed a thin line, um, a messenger line down the middle of the halyard coming out at the bottom through the hole and then using that we could pull the halyard back up. So I climbed the mast, attached a shackle pin to a thin line, dropped that down through the inside of the mast. Pascal was able to get it uh, to the side where she needed it with the magnets and then she just hooked it with a bit of wire. We pulled it through and then we just tied the new halyard and ran it back up through the middle of the mast. Okay, so halyards in place, barrel knots at the top of the, the swiveled catch here. There's also another swivel in there, so it should all be pretty good. Let's, uh, let's just haul it up and have a look at how things fly with our spinnaker now. That's pretty good. That's a truly windless day when the spinnaker doesn't billow out. It's a beautiful day here in Shark Bay. After a while in Shelter Bay, the wind returned and we were off further north. Yeah, there's a, there's a channel leading north and we decided to take that with the tide, didn't we? Yeah, and it was really nice sailing actually. There's no swell in Shark Bay, so just got a bit of sea there from the wind, but it was a really nice sail. We were going around six, seven knots. So it was a pretty uh, epic trawling mission there. Yeah. Bit of a fight. What you got? I think it's a ranking code. Or well, we think it's a ranking code. And why did that thing fight so hard? I haven't seen mackerel fight that hard. Uh, because it was side. It was like side hook. In the, the old foul hook in the foul field. Hook. Oh, it's a bit of a struggle, but um, <laughs> that's that's some that's some good grub you got there. It was really hot in Shark Bay and um, Pascal wanted to try something a little different, so... I put on my harness and Troy sent me out on the pole. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I had that's... a little bit of a pole dance. <laughs> a bit of a pole dance. A pole swim. What's going on here? So this is how we like to test all of our uh, climbing harnesses. Live loading. Hey Dom. We put two halyards on that. Uh, one to take the main load, one as a backup. Um, and sent Pascal out with a preventer four and a half, so it was well guided, she was pretty stable. Um, and we were still getting along at good speed. After we got Pascal on board, 
Uh, we picked up a little bit more speed and it's nearly impossible to go anywhere in Shark Bay if you're trolling a lure without some fish uh, wanting to come aboard. With the trolling setup that we've got, it's very rare that we actually have to stop to fight with a fish, apart from that ranking cod that Pascal caught. Uh, with mackerel they do one big run and then we can tend, usually get them to the boat without stopping. Um, so you'll often see that in the videos that we do, that we just keep sailing and sort of skull drag the fish in after the initial fight. Quite a few yachties just use a very heavy hand line pulling a spoon along and um, they say they use that setup just so they don't have to stop and deal with the fish, they can just pull it in. Um, but we find that you'd miss a lot of fish like that and we just use a 15 kilo overhead outfit and you can see that we don't have to stop the boat, we can, we can pull it in just fine. So I would encourage people out there sailing to just, just think about that because really your catch rate goes through the roof. When you've got a fish frame, it's always good to throw it in to have a look and see who's swimming around. The old mackerel that we got on the way in. Spanish mackerel sashimi and um, we like it more than tuna. This is absolutely delicious. Mm. Luckily we've got soy sauce here. We've got ooh, mm. fresh wasabi being prepared. I've uncovered it. I don't know if I've ruined it. But uh, this is breakfast while we're sailing to our uh, next dive spot. All right here we are the Broadhurst corals. We've got, a, uh, we've got a lot of Spanish mackerel in the fridge, so this is just a friendly snorkel. No fish are going to get annoyed here. Let's go see. Everything you need is right in front of you, front of you When you learn to see Good things come to you All you have to do is stop And take a look around Well, we went to a little bit of trouble to try and find the spot where the current's coming onto the reef and um, that's the reward for it. All the fish like to get on the current side of the reef and congregate so that looks like it. Let's go down and have a bit more of a snip around. Before you intervene Don't do anything, anything Just come to all your senses They'll tell you everything First you have to learn to stop And take a look around Take a look around Listen to the sound Why not take a whiff? You'll see much better if you use more than just your eyes Take a step outside So we finished snorkeling at the Broadhurst Corals and um, the current kicked in so it was time to go, wasn't it, Pascal? Yes, and there was just a very light breeze, so we were able to hoist the spinnaker and leave the anchorage under sail. How many knots, Dal? How many knots indeed? 3.7, nice. 3.4, 3.4. Good 
We're going at the same speed as the wind because we can't feel anything. Mm. So at sunset under Spinnaker Run, we were visited by our old friends the dolphins, weren't we, Pascal? Yep. But uh, under Spinnaker, we were just taking it too casual that they didn't want to play under the bow. They were sort of stayed aloof. They did. There were many of them, but they didn't want to come up and visit us at the bow. I think they are quite bored by the boat. That one had a really curve. So after our spinnaker run, we spent the night at, well, just under Cape Perrin North. Um, and in the morning, what did we see? We were visited by some feral goats. The old goats on the beach. It's not often that you see it. They're trying to drink the salt water. Being oh. goats, they're probably successful. You probably can drink it. Maybe they come to get a little bit of salt. They might be able to get fresh water further in. They're obviously good at surviving here. They're really making good pace here. We heard a lot about the wreck of the Goodrum. We were determined to find it. So after the goats on the beach had left, uh, we pulled anchor and we were try we had to go and navigate our way through a whole bunch of shoals to get there, but um, we gave it a go. So on our way to the shipwreck, we were uh, paying close to doing a little bit of four-wheel driving through the reef there, become a shipwreck ourselves. Basically what the upshot was, was the chart said we had reasonably deep water to get through. Uh, my Polaroid glasses said something different, so we just hoisted the, uh, the headsail and we turned on the main engine, did a bit of manoeuvring and it's probably just as well because it got to about 20 centimetres under the keel and uh, still, still a bit shallow here. So we're just doing a little bit of um, just manoeuvring by Polaroid and sounder at the moment rather than just off the chart. I've just spat in my mask. That's good for it. Yeah. Do you want me to spit in it? Oh, I think my spit's fine. I'm a dive master. Oh, I've always wanted a dive master to spit in my mask. No, that's not true. No one wants that. Going in, Dave. Got the, the wreck of the Goodrin here, so it doesn't look like a ship anymore, just a whole bunch of pieces of timber, and that's how we found it, just a whole lot of straight edges. There's lots of blur to trevally, cod, snapper, blue bone, everything you want really. So we'll go down and have a look. Again, we're not going with a spear gun, this is a protected area, so it's just a looky see. Hopefully there's a nice tiger around here somewhere as well. We'll get some footage of that, that'd be pretty sick. <laughs>
We don't carry tanks on board, so we really like to free dive wherever we go. And that lack of bubbles, it's not as intrusive and the fish tend to come really close. You always turn back to what you found wrong Maybe it's hard to come to face with such solitude you used to love every moment there on your own. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I've seen you fight most of your life there in your eyes. Honey, I'm high of the disguise. I've worn into this ride.